So like my friends and I, we're going to this coffee shop, a really cool one, and we see this guy who's dressed, well, pretty much like everybody else, and we're thinking, I wonder if that guy's a Christian. I mean, he looks really cool. He looks like the world. He's got that little cool facial hair and some really neat glasses. When all of a sudden somebody walked up to him and said, hey man, can you tell me about the hope that lies within you? And then we knew for sure he was a Christian. So he had this guy sit down with him and, and like he asked him what his hopes and his dreams and his plans were. And, he, and the guy with the goatee listened to his story the whole time and I thought, hey man, you're a Christian. Why don't you actually tell him about the hope that lies within you and about God's judgment and then he can be saved if he'll repent and put his trust in the Savior. But he never did that and I don't, I don't understand that. You see, there's this group of people emerging. They don't like street preachers, specifically street preachers that use words like sin and burn and hell and wrath and judgment, repent. They don't like those words because they think that Jesus is love. And because Jesus showed love, then we should show people love. And the last thing we should do is go around condemning or converting anybody. Hey, well, I don't agree with street preachers who are unreasonable. I happen to be one of those guys who actually embraces words like sin and hell and anger, wrath and repent. So how is it I like those words and other guys don't like those words? I think I know the reason why. They don't have the missing information. They don't understand God's law and his anger and sin. And so words like hell and wrath seem unreasonable. But when you understand God's moral law, I think those words become very reasonable and extremely important. Let me introduce you to four doctors, and you tell me which doctor you think is the most loving. First of all, there's Dr. Scare. Dr. Scare walks around the hospital, he walks around the physician's clinic, and he tells everybody, you're going to die, you're going to die. He's scary, and he's unreasonable, too, because he hasn't told people why they're going to die. Do you think he's a good doctor? Second doctor is Dr. Wu. Dr. Wu goes around telling people on the streets, hey, why don't you come to the hospital? Come to the hospital because they have all-you-can-eat frozen custard in the cafeteria, and they've got social meetings on Wednesday night that are really good. Do you think Dr. Wu is a good doctor? Third doctor is Dr. Love. Dr. Love has patients come and see him, and he tells them that he loves them. And he liked to listen to their stories, hear about their problems, their hopes, and their dreams. But Dr. Love never examines them, and Dr. Love never tells them that they have a disease that's terminal because he doesn't think that's very loving. And so everybody walks away thinking that they've been loved, but they don't know that they're sick and that they're going to die. Is he a good doctor? Love doesn't make somebody feel good for a superficial reason. Love says, hey, you're sick, you're going to die. Think of a blind man walking toward a cliff. Would Dr. Love just walk up to the guy and say, hey, man, I love you, I'd like to hear your story. Ah, and the guy falls over the cliff. That's not loving. Real love examines a person, helps them understand their disease, and then offers the cure. That's true love. So here's the fourth doctor. He's Dr. Reason. Dr. Reason has a nice bedside manner, but he takes the time to examine the patient, breaks the hard news to him gently and lovingly, but he breaks the bad news to him. Nevertheless, patient, you're sick. You've got a disease. And when the patient begins to tremble and shake, then Dr. Reason says, but I've got good news. Here's the cure. And then the patient who is terminally ill actually desires the cure. Same thing is true for Christians. Hey, it's nice to let somebody cry on our shoulder. That's kind of loving. But real love does more than listen to people's problems. Real love says, hey, let me hold this mirror of God's law, the Ten Commandments, up to you so that the individual can see their terminal illness. It's called sin, and the consequence is death. And then when they start to shake and tremble, we get to share the real good news, that there's a cure for their problem. For a doctor not to examine them and tell them about their illness and to give them the cure, man, that's medical malpractice. And for Christians to not do the same thing, that's Christian malpractice. But Dr. Love objects. Dr. Love says that Jesus didn't come to judge, but he came to save. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right, but he came to save us from what? He came to save us from the second time when he comes to judge. 
So we got to warn people. He's coming back to judge. And the first time he came, he came to save you. And now you must repent and put your trust in the Savior. But Dr. Love says, no, 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 no. God loves us just the way we are. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are by nature children of wrath. And unless we repent and put our trust in the Savior, we're not children of God. We're children of the devil. Dr. Love says, man, it seems like all you're trying to do is convert people. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We are. Because we don't want them to go to hell. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Dr. Love says, you know, if you're, if you're trying to have a relationship with somebody because you just have an agenda, that's not real love. Well, Dr. Love, don't you have an agenda too? The question isn't if we have an agenda. That's not a bad thing. The question is, whose agenda is right? Dr. Love complains, hey, Jesus never said turn or burn. Okay, I agree, Dr. Love. He never did say turn or burn exactly like that, but he did say repent, turn from your sins and put your trust in him, Mark 1.15. A man or a woman must repent, turn from their sins, or God will give them what they deserve. Jesus, in all of his discourses, spent 13% of his time warning people about hell. Shouldn't we do the same? I mean, Dr. Love, what do you do with Romans 2 that says God is the just judge of all the world? He'll judge all people according to what they have done, and he will pour out his anger and his wrath on everybody who refuses to repent, who practices evil deeds and lives for themselves. There'll be trouble and calamity on that day. What do you do with that verse? Do you just say to the guy, hey, tell me your story. I'll listen. That's not loving. So here's what I'd like to do, Dr. Love. I want to see which method is the most loving and the most reasonable. We'll try it your way, and then we'll try it the way of reason, and we'll let everybody decide for themselves. So I'm going to call somebody off the street. Haven't talked to this young man. Dude, come over here. And we're going to see what makes the most sense and what is truly loving. Dude, nice to meet you. What's your name? Nick. I would like to uh, let you know that I'm a... Uh, I'm a very caring guy, I'm a very compassionate guy. And if you've got anything that's troubling you or bothering you, any hurts, any dreams that haven't been fulfilled, you've got any heartache or sadness or bad things that are going on in your life, anything that you're feeling blue or sad about, if you'd like to share them with me, I just want you to know I'm happy to listen to you. No, not really. My private life's actually pretty chill. Um... Nothing for me personally. Your girlfriend's mad at you? Anything? Oh, no, 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 we're cool. Yeah, right. Nothing's really troubling me. I want to try another angle with you, okay? Right. Tell me, do you have a Christian background? Yes. I think I've done mostly the right thing so right. far. 